So this comes with Windows 10 Home. What the, like, come on. Let's get rid of that Windows Home. Let's get some Windows Pro. Copy and paste my code from the description. You can also get Office 2019. Just paste my code, woof. It's Windows Pro time. All right, so I'm actually recording straight into it here, as you can see. Um, let's see if it comes up with that disk error that sometimes happens. It hasn't happened lately, so maybe they've fixed that. And I am on Catalina, by the way. So anyway, the new MacBook Pro 16 is due anytime. And for actual fact, I reckon it's going to drop tonight. I reckon it's going to drop this week. Um, I'll have videos about it. Don't worry about that. So you stay tuned for that and make sure you subscribe and sub up and like and all that stuff. But I want to talk about this, the long-term review. Do you believe I didn't actually review this? Wow. I cannot believe I didn't review this. And this has been a workhorse. I've slammed this thing. And this is a long-term review. You know the specs, you know, 9980HK or 9750H CPU, 32 gigs RAM, four Thunderbolt 3s, you know, 16 by 10, 100% DCI-P3 display, one of the best displays, even though it is aging these days. And, you know, they'll probably have a HDR one in the 16. What a, what a machine, all right? And I'm going to get stuck into it later. And you might think I'm nitpicking, but this is the thing. This is why these long-term reviews are the best because, you know, when you have something for so long, you get to know everything about it. Usually I have two-week loan periods or something like that. You know, you don't get to really know, you know, long-term how it's going to handle stuff, how stable it's going to be. They could have heaps of bias revisions and updates and the battery life can get worse, it can get better and, you know, all sorts of things. The long-term reviews are the best. And it'll be interesting to know, should you buy this? If the new 16-inch comes out and they're selling this as well as the 16-inch, should you buy this over the 16-inch? As many problems as this thing has had, I think now it's super stable. Um, there's not many issues with it. I will get into them. But, um, you know, the keyboard doesn't fail on these at the moment. Touch wood. These new ones, these 219s, they did update the keyboard and it hasn't played up so far. And even Ash from Vitudio. What the f just happened? Which, you know, sub up to him because um, he's going to have some 16 inch MacBook Pro love too, I expect. He hasn't killed the keyboard on his laptop and he just writes, I love Nora all day. And like his N key is still holding up. So I think the keyboard issues with these, yes, previous to this version here, the 219, you got to worry about it. Although Apple do have the repair program, so I wouldn't worry that much. You know, it's just the inconvenience of going to the shop, getting it replaced. But these 219 ones so far, touch a bit of metal there. Um, no issues with the keyboard. Actually, I never had any issues with the other ones. So I can't really talk for keyboard issues. I will say I do hold it upside down and, you know, blow it out every day, which I shouldn't have to do with a laptop, but it's just, you know, I know these keyboards have been failing. Now, if this laptop does end up existing with the new MacBook Pro, maybe this will be the better buy because I've got to say, I think they've worked most of the problems out on these. You might end up wanting to get this over the 16 inch because this one has been, you know, tested out there for a long time. You know what you're getting. They've refined this since 2016. So most of the issues have been worked out and even the keyboard, cross fingers again. And do you want to get a Gen 1 16 inch MacBook Pro? <laughs> Whoa. You got to be brave to do that, I'd say. And I will say, even this, with the latest Adobe, Adobe 2020 and Catalina, I've had stuff all issues. Actually, I had one yesterday. I tell a lie. I had one issue yesterday. I'm actually building a Hackintosh. I mean, this is the ultimate perfect Hackintosh that I've actually built. And that thing has not had one tiny issue at all. This one, every now and then, I'll get some sort of error, like I'm recording into Logic. It'll just stop recording. And on many occasions, I've had to actually re-record. Now, I will point you to this guy called John Sin. If you're a music producer and you're going to use lots of plugins and stuff like that, check out John Sin's channel. He's a DJ, music producer, and he says this is unusable for what he does. If I now hit play on a song... <laughs> Just opening the mixer, it stops. I don't know if he's got a dud, but I'll get you onto his videos, maybe ask him some questions about it because he's ready to throw his in the bin. And I suspect he's just got a ton of plugins and VSTs and stuff like that. And that's the thing about this, you know, and he's thermally challenged. I don't know, is that the best way of putting it? But for me, 
I have no issues. Yes, when you light up the CPU and GPU, you're gonna hear some fan noise. It's nowhere near as loud as gaming laptops. You won't get the ultimate performance out of these parts, but I do think with even Premiere, Final Cut Pro, when it's hooked onto metal, which even Adobe products are hooked onto metal these days, you get great performance out of it. It has really been optimized. And did you know that this MacBook Pro, the 15 inch MacBook Pro is the number one Final Cut Pro Mac out of everything? I was blown away when I read that. So there's a lot of people using these for Final Cut Pro and that. Go to John Sin's channel for the music production, but for Final Cut, even Premiere, for the content I use, 4K H.264, H.265, it is amazing, performs amazing, as fast as anything out there. It's like as fast as the gaming laptops. The only ones that actually beat this are the ones I've overclocked, the i9s and stuff like that. Um, other than that, this is like super fast, Edit in 4K, like butter. Again, it is thermally challenged. If you're going to look at a benchmark, you're not going to be happy with it. But it's not a gaming laptop. You don't usually light up the GPU and the CPU at the same time. And for video editing, it's been rock solid. No issues, even in Catalina with Adobe 2020 products. So the ones that just released like last week or whatever. Like I only had that one issue so far. And that was when it was plugged into an eGPU and that was the 5700 XT. So, you know, could be something, you know, they've got to optimize the drivers for the 5700 XT. It's only just started supporting it now. I can highly recommend this laptop. It's in my top three laptops without a doubt. And when do I use this over the XPS 15? I use this quite a lot. And I've used the other one, the six core one, since pretty much the start of this year when I sold the XPS 15 because I thought the new one was coming out. I actually do know when the new XPS 15 is coming out. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to make a video about that. I know when that one's coming out for sure. The new MacBook Pro 16 is coming out very soon as well. But getting back to my point, for six months nearly until the XPS 15 come out, I used the six core version of this, the one previous to this. That one might still have keyboard issues because this is the eight core version, the newer one, the one with the better keyboard. And that six core one was rock solid. Like that was amazing. I did have some build quality issues. I've had like over 10 of these. Like I'm going to tell you now, it is hit or miss if you get a good one build quality wise. Like the the quality control is not what it used to be at Apple. I'll give you that. So make sure, you know, in the trial period, you look for everything that can be possibly wrong with it, like really scrutinize it, even the panels lining up, everything. Just make sure it is solid and even you can extend that to 30 days. Go to Apple and say, hey, I want 30 days. I want a couple of extra weeks to evaluate it. Can you tick that off? They will and really make sure it is good. That's what I've done. I've returned a few of these. I'm not going to lie, man. So I've had over 10 of these and I've had like four of these versions here. So until I was happy, that is what it is. But despite that, Given all the issues that people have had with these keyboards, the older versions, you know, motherboard changes, battery changes, like a lot of issues, like the flex gate with the cables playing up with the display and that, I think most of that's worked out. But even with all those problems, it's such a pleasure to use this laptop and it's so amazing when it works right and when you get a good one that even people that have issues with it, like if they were with the Windows laptop or something like that, I don't know if they've got Stockholm Syndrome or something, but they will put up with it and say, all right, I'll get this replaced because it's so good when it works, it works well, it's amazing, that they'll put up with that stuff. Whereas maybe if they were using a PC, and this is like a real thing, I'm not even joking, they'll go, just one little thing will be wrong and they'll be, oh no, it's quite a blue screen or, you know... They're not really that fair to the windows, like just little minor issues where, you know, this one may have major issues. They'll, you know, downplay the issues with this and go, oh, I just went to Apple, got it repaired. But with the PC, they're like, oh, no, I can't handle it. Had a blue screen or this or that. And it's just like a minor issue, but they play that up because they don't really love the PC as much as they do love this. And that's the user experience, right? That's something you can't measure and it's real. Like it is a pleasure to use when I use this and the most of the time when I do use this it's when I airdrop so if I have B footage on my phone I just airdrop it into there and to be perfectly honest whichever laptop's closer to me most of the time <laughs> XPS is closer to me I'll grab that if this is closer I'll grab this although when I do have that B footage as I said I usually use this one you can tell when I've used the Mac and when I've used the PC if you're eagle-eyed because you can tell by the font of my thumbnail on YouTube. So it will be Helvetica if it's done on the Mac, and it will be Sagu if it's done on the Windows PC. 
So anyway, that's my long-term review. Cannot wait for the 16-inch to come out. I highly recommend this. Don't know about the first generation of the 16-inch. Stay tuned here because I will slam that thing. Um, yeah, it's a first-gen Apple product these days, you know. Back before, you know, 2015, build quality was amazing. Quality control was amazing. That's not the current Apple anymore. So anyway, hope I helped you. Catch you in the next one. Sally ho. Oh. Okay, that's still recording. Whoa, no issues today. Happy days. Woo!